Hello everyone, I'm Anas, and today we will learn how to transform your already existing GCP infrastructure to Terraform code with Terraformer. Before we begin, if you've searched for this video, you probably already know what Terraform is, but if you don't, it's okay. It's a tool made by HashiCorp to help you harness the power of infrastructure as code. You can use it to manage or provision any cloud infrastructure or service. It works on all major cloud providers, but each one of them has a specific provider to create its specific resources. Today, we will focus on GCP. So this video will be made of three sections. I'll put timestamps on the screen so you can jump straight into any of them as needed. First, we will start by installing Terraformer. Then we will create some resources manually. And finally, we will get our Terraform code representing these resources. So let's go ahead and start with the installation. It's fairly simple. So I'm here in my platform for Google Cloud. I will activate my Cloud Shell. So we can start the installation. Let's wait for it to establish connection. And here it is. So the first thing we need to do is to export our provider as Google. Then we will use curl to download the packages for Terraformer. After it's done, let's change the permission so we can utilize Terraformer. And then we will move it to slash user slash local slash bin so we can use it wherever we are in the console. Okay, so the installation is done. Let's check if it's well done by using Terraformer dash dash version. And as you can see, the version is 0.8.8. .8. As for Terraform, you don't have to install it if you will use Google Cloud Shell because it's already installed. You can check the version by typing Terraform dash dash version. As you can see, it's already installed with the version 0.12.24. The next thing we need to do is to create a file for initializing Terraform and importing all its necessary plugins and modules. To do that, let's create a file. Let's name it start.f. You can use the editor if you want to get a clearer view of your code. So in our file, let's just type provider Google and that's it. Let's return now to the terminal and do a Terraform in it. You'll see it's imported all the plugins and modules necessary. And now we can move on to the second step. So let's create some resources. For example, let's do a VPC. Create a new VPC. Let's name it VPC. Performer. And let's make a new subnet. For region, choose whichever region you want. It doesn't really matter. Same for the side range. And then create. While it's creating, let's also make a a VM instance. Let's 
let's put it in the same region as our subnet because we will put it in our newly created VPC. Click down and for networking tag, let's give it the tag. And create. While we're at it, let's also add a firewall rule. our newly created VPC. Target tags, let's use Terraformer to target our machine and the source from any address. And allow for lady and 22, for example, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now all our resources are created. So let's go back to our terminal. So now once we are in the terminal, let's use the command terraformer import to import our resources. If you want to get more information about terraformer, you can visit their GitHub page. You can see here installation guides and the different types of resources that you can import using Terraformer. For example, with GCP, there's the full list of supported services like IP addresses, additional disks, DNS managed zones, DNS record sets, pretty much any resource you might use in GCP. So for our command, for our case, we will import our firewall, our VM instance, our VPC, and our subnet that we created in the region, US Central 1. For projects, let's put our project ID. Mine is this one. There is a mistake. Regions. And the US Central one. It's importing our resources. Okay, it's done. So let's go back to editor. We will find the file name generated with our project ID on it. Let's see, for example, let's go to instances. And we have the Terraform code necessary to create our instance. You can see its name, the name of the boot disk, the network interface, and many other things. Now, all you need to do is to tweak this code to replace things such as network and other parameters and use it for your infrastructure. And you can import it and share it with anyone and reuse it many, many times. I hope you liked the tutorial and thank you for watching.